once we take our test tomorrow, and again, this one for the quiz. This won't be on the quiz, obviously, either. But we're, we're sort of switching gears and giving you some shortcuts. So I said earlier, there's only so many functions where you can do your f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Um, there's also only so many functions where even doing the alternate form of the derivative is possible and or efficient. At some point along the line, some genius mathematicians realized that there were a lot of like quicker shortcuts, and then we're going to start getting into all of those. And the first of those that we're going to talk about are, are trig shortcuts. We've not, and we clearly we've not really ever had to find the derivative or the slope of a trig function at any given point yet, and that's because those methods that we've used would be fairly inefficient, if at all possible. I'd have to even play around with them to see if they're possible. So someone realized that the derivative of the sine curve is actually the cosine curve. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because where the sine curve hits like a slope of zero, its relative maxes, the cosine curve is actually a root there. You see that? So your sine curve has a slope of zero and your cosine curve shows a zero there. And then in between, to get to your next one, like there's my sine curve, the next time we get to a slope of zero is there, and that's exactly when this one's gonna cross the root again. Um, and then in between here, in between those two roots, or those relative maxes and mins, the sine curve is negative, or is, is decreasing, I should say. The sine curve is decreasing which equates to a negative section on the cosine curve. So someone realized, I don't know who, but we thank them and we steal from them and we move on with our lives, that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And it's not quite vice versa, but the derivative of cosine is the negative sine of x. So you have to memorize those. You just have to know the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then exponential functions are their own derivative, which is unique. So the derivative of an e to the x function is given by the formula e to the x. So we're just gonna use those rules to find the derivatives here. Now, pi is just a constant, so that just can stay there, but g prime of t if there's a constant out in front, that's just going to stay there, times, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So times negative sine of t. And then the negative sign really should be out in front. So negative pi sine of t would be your formula to use to find the slope of that g function at any location you were interested in. Okie doke. On this one, because the, uh, the notation is y equals, I'm going to use the notation y prime equals. And then there are two parts here. I'm going to find the derivative of the first part. Now, again, 3 quarters is a constant to that, so that's just going to stay and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So that doesn't appear to change at all. And then on the 2 sine x part, again, the constant can stay right there, but the derivative of sine is cosine. So here's the formula that we would use to find the slope on this function at any given x location. Good? Then they ask us to essentially utilize that, um, these rules to specifically find a derivative at the point pi 7, and pi 7 falls on this graph, wants us to figure out what the slope is there. So we're first going to find g prime of t. We're just going to find the generic formula first. The negative 2 is a constant, so that can stay out in front. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And what is the derivative 
of any constant. Sorry, I should, I should. So there's my function. I found the derivative of this piece and the derivative of this piece. If you have an equation that's just y equals five, what's the derivative of that? Here's the line y equals five. What's the slope of that? Zero, okay? So if g, this is just a side note, if g of x equals a constant, then g prime of that is zero. Always, because the slope is always zero. So this would just be like plus a zero at the end of it. And then we want to evaluate this at a t value or an x value of pi, so we're just gonna do g prime of pi. And that's a positive, right? Can we all agree? Negative two times negative sine is a positive two sine of pi plus zero. And what's the sine of pi? Zero. Two times zero is zero. So apparently the slope of this at pi is zero. And you know how I like to just confirm these calculations that we're just supposed to be trusting. So I'm going to go 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to count by pi's. Here's what the graph of it looks like. So that's the graph of the original function here. We've just supposedly calculated that at pi, the slope is zero. And here's pi. Can you all agree that that reflects the slope of zero at that location? Yes. Okay. After pi, we should get a derivative that's in the negatives. Prior to pi, we should get a derivative that's in the positives. And actually over here, it looks like there's another zero. But Good? Okay. Flip it over. Oh, we may finish this today. I think we will. And then tomorrow you'll just take your quiz and then you can just start on your homework afterwards. Deal? Alright, write an equation of a line tangent to this at this point. So if we're writing the equation of a line, we need a point and we need a slope. Well, they already told us the point, so that's a no-brainer. Pi comma one-half e to the pi power. It's not a pretty point, but it's a point. And we need the slope of a tangent line at that location, which tells us we need our derivative at that location so that we have a slope to use at that location. So h prime of t, the derivative of sine is, John? The derivative of sine t is? No, look at the front of your paper. Cosine, good. Plus, and this is just an e to the x function, so it's one half e to the t has a derivative that's just the same thing, one half e to the t. So now to find our slope at this location, we need to find our derivative at that pi location. So we're going to evaluate our derivative at that location, which will give us cosine of pi plus one-half e to the pi. What's the cosine of pi? What? Negative one plus one-half e to the pi. And that's really the best we can do with that. So our slope is this really ugly number. So when we're writing the equation of a tangent line, you have to bear with the fact that the coordinates are ugly, the slope is ugly, and everything in between is ugly. It's y minus your y coordinate, so y minus a half e to the pi, equals m, so I'm doing y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, in case I've lost anybody with writing the equation of a line. Hopefully not. Your slope is a binomial, so I'm going to keep that in parentheses, which usually we don't have to, but this is odd and then x minus the x-coordinate of pi. And 
if you wanted to, you could distribute, like foil these out and add your half E to the pi power over. I don't think it's going to do much for us. It's going to probably make it equally as ugly, so you're just better off leaving it alone. Okie doke. And determine the points at which the function has a horizontal tangent line. If something has a horizontal tangent line, what does it mean about the slope at that location? So here's a curve, has a horizontal tangent line. Or here's a curve, has a horizontal tangent line. What does it mean about the slope at that point of tangency? Zero. So we essentially want to find the location where this derivative equals zero. We want to know where does y prime equal zero. So we have to find y prime and then set it equal to zero. What about a vertical tangent line? If something has a vertical tangent line, so um, something like this. What's the slope at that point of tangency? Joint? Undefined. So we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to figure out where y prime does not exist. So let's find y prime. Now, this is a linear section, right? This is the line y equals 1x. What's the derivative of a line that has a slope of 1? No matter where you are. Here's the line y equals 1x. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. What's the slope of that line no matter where you are? Oops, sorry. 1. Okay? So the derivative of that first part is 1. And then 4e to the x just remains 4e to the x. We want to find the point. So we have to start by finding the x-coordinate of the point. So subtract 1 from both sides. 4e to the x equals negative 1. Divide by 4 on both sides. e to the x equals negative 1 fourth. What do you have to do to both sides to solve for x? ln. What's going to happen when you try to take the ln of a negative? Does not exist. So there is no location. So this says there is no location where function has a horizontal tangent line. Okay, and on the second part, we already found the derivative, so we don't need to do it again. What x values would make this not exist? What x values would make this undefined? What do you think, Olivia? You can raise e to a negative power. What x values would you plug in? 2.7 to what power would be a problem? Maybe kind of a trick question because there's no problem at all, right? So this will always exist. So from that, we gather there's also no vertical tangent line. And if I show you what that original function looks like, okay, who knows what shape that is, but, set, but you can see there's no zero, it seems to always be increasing which actually makes sense because no matter what x value I plug into that, isn't it going to be a positive number, right? And if your slope is always positive, no matter what x you plug in, I should say if your derivative is always positive, that means the slope of your function is always positive and therefore your function is always increasing. 
it never has a slope of zero or an undefined slope. Good? So maybe we'll finish that last example tomorrow after your quiz. But if you do finish your quiz early tomorrow, you'll at least be able to get started on that section of the homework. Okie doke. All right, so I'll give you your packets. How about you take a... Where's my basketball player?